Greetings. When it comes to mathematics, one of the things that I hope you leave as an undergraduate from any program you would be in is understanding that the square root of 2 is irrational. One of the most fundamental questions that probably came to us from the ancient Greeks was dealing with the idea of irrational numbers. They referred to them as incommensurable numbers meaning that you could not measure the length of an incommensurate number against a unit segment. It simply doesn't work. And because of this, there would be great debates. Do these incommensurate numbers exist? They do. They were accepted by the philosophers. But what in the world? Well, the question is, how do we go about proving, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the square root of 2 is incommensurate or irrational. Well, the proof for this is one of the classic proofs in all of mathematics. And it's a proof by contradiction. So, let's begin. Proof by contradiction basically says make an assumption. And the assumption that we make is the square root of 2 is rational. And we're going to show that if that statement right there is a true statement, that it will lead to some absurdity in mathematics. Let's watch which absurdity comes out of this assumption of a false statement. So, if so, if the square root of 2 is rational, then the square root of 2 is equal to p over q for p and q elements of the positive integers. And, and this is an important piece in this proof, the greatest common factor of P and Q is 1. All right, so there we go. With the assumption that P is, I'm sorry, that square root of 2 is rational, we now know the square root of 2 is equal to P over Q. But I don't like fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now say that Q onto the square root of 2 must be equal to p, simply by multiplying both sides. By the way, q cannot be uh, 0, just in case anyone was wondering. So, now, I also don't like square roots, so why don't we square both sides? So, I now have q squared times 2 equals p squared which says that 2q squared equals p squared. Now, here's where it gets interesting. No problem whatsoever, except for the fact that, well, we've got this doggone nasty 2 floating around. And this means, if we look at it, that p squared is an even integer. Now, if p squared is an even integer, it follows, and I'm going to say this without proof, but it does, it follows then that p is even. Now, if p is even, we know the definition of even says that p, therefore, is equal to 2k for k, an element of, in this case, the positive integer, since p is positive. So that means we can substitute for p this value 2k. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go back to my last equation. I'm going to say, so 2q squared is equal to 2k as a group squared, which is 4 times k squared. Not a problem. Now then, that says I can divide both sides by 2, so I now have q squared is equal to 2k squared. Therefore, q 
Q squared is even. And right there we have reached our absurdity. Do you see it? If not, think about it for a moment. You may even want to pause the video. But when you get back to me, this is what I'm going to tell you. P squared was even. That meant P was even. Q squared is even. Therefore, Q is even. Which meant that both P and Q contain factors of 2. But way over here when we said that the square root of 2 is rational, we said we could write it as P over Q for, these int so for some positive integers. But notice the condition. And the greatest common factor of P and Q had to be 1. But I have just demonstrated that P and Q it follows that the greatest common factor of P and Q at least 2. So in other words, I can't find this P and Q to even start the problem because when I think I have them, they don't have a greatest common factor of 1. They violate my definition. The logic of the problem, everything logically worked once you started with this definition and then you realize you begin to eat yourself because you can't actually use the definition because when you do, you get to an absurd statement. And therefore, we can now say reducto ab ad absurdum. Reduce to the absurd. It's what the Greeks would say when they did a proof by contradiction. We've taken something, we made an assumption, and we've shown that that assumption, if taken as true, results in some absurdity. Therefore, the thing that we assume to be true makes no sense. The square root of 2 is rational, makes no sense. Therefore, the only thing you can conclude is the square root of 2 is not rational, irrational. There you go. Reducto ad absurdum. I hope this helps.